Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Jenny Montgomery. This is a very special half hour dedicated today to the opioid crisis in our nation. You hear about it all the time on the news. So today we'll take a look at some numbers and an amazing 10 day treatment that is getting attention from medical professionals around the country. First, let's understand the problem though. Drug overdose deaths in this country are staggering and opioids, we know them as painkillers, both prescription and illicit, are the main drivers of the trend. Opioids were involved in 42,249 deaths in 2016. The last year, the Centers for Disease Control has complete data. From 99 to 2016, more than 350,000 people died from an overdose involving any opioid, prescription or illegal. The rise in opioid-related deaths can be seen in three distinct waves. You can see in the graphic, the first wave began with increased prescribing of opioids back in the 1990s. The second wave began began in 2010 with rapid increases in overdose deaths involving heroin. And the third wave began in 2013 with significant increases in overdose deaths involving synthetic opioids. According to the CDC, six out of 10 drug overdose deaths does involve opioids. More than four times as many people OD'd on prescription painkillers in 2015 than in 2000. Several states are working to help with the opioid abuse all over the country, including South Carolina, where several counties are filing lawsuits against drug makers, pharmacies, distributors, and doctors over opioid abuse. The counties claim they spend millions of dollars each year in healthcare costs and services because of deceptive practices and addictive effects of painkillers. The larger companies declined to comment on this issue. In Georgia, the Attorney General has declared opioid abuse not just a statewide issue, but a national emergency. That's why Chris Carr announced the creation of a new Peach State Task Force created to fight the opioid crisis. He says it will be composed of public, private, and nonprofit leaders. Last year in Georgia, 982 people died from opioid-related drug overdoses. Even Walmart is taking a swing at the opioid epidemic. The retail giant is launching a new disposal product in an effort to help fight opioid abuse. It's called Dispose RX. It provides a safe and effective way to get rid of the unused drug. According to the manufacturer, when Dispose RX is added to a pill bottle with warm water, it separates the medication into a biodegradable gel. Walmart pharmacies will provide it at no cost. That product also available at Sam's Clubs. It is important to provide treatment for people struggling with addiction to prevent overdose or even deaths. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it's crucial to expand access to treatments, including medication assisted therapy or MAT. But my guest today says there's another way to treat addiction, aversion therapy. It absolutely saved my life. I don't think that I had the willpower to do it without the help of Shikshadal. It wasn't a pleasant experience as far as the treatments go, but the overall experience was, it, it was pretty amazing. When we come back, a discussion about the stunning results of aversion therapy, not only with alcohol, but with opioids. With a psychiatrist who sees it firsthand, Dr. Richard Montgomery joins me next. Chick Shadle's 10-day medical treatment for addiction is clinically proven to work, and it will work for you too. A recent scientific study confirmed Chick's amazing results. Brain scans proved that aversion therapy ends the cravings. After years of depressing treatment programs, a friend recommended Chick, and it worked. It's unbelievable, but it's true. Thank you, Chick. In just 10 days, you can feel great again. Call 800 Craving now. And this gentleman beside me might look quite familiar now. You've just seen his picture in that ad for Schick Shadle Hospital. This is Dr. Richard Montgomery. And yes, we are related. Richard is my brother, and I'm so pleased that he is visiting Augusta right now. Richard lives in Boise, Idaho, and in Seattle, Washington, where the Schick Shadle Hospital is. I wanna tell you a little bit about Richard first. I have to brag on you, baby brother. Richard got his medical doctorate from MUSC in 1999. He did his residency in psychiatry training at UC Davis in California and then completed a fellowship in geriatric psychiatry 
at the uh, Western Psychiatric, Psychiatric Institute at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. And Richard, it's been really interesting to watch your career over the years and to watch your practice grow in Boise. Um, as I said, Richard is a psychiatrist and he's, he's committed to that field. But Richard, the, the whole opioid epidemic is something that we can't ignore. And in your field, of course you all don't ignore it, but I want you to tell us about um, what you're doing with aversion therapy. Aversion therapy was something I, you, you receive some uh, basic information about when you're in residency training, but it's something that's not implemented widely in psychiatry. Uh, and there are a number of different reasons for that. But I was approached by uh, a good friend of mine who's the CEO of Schick Shale about a year ago um, as he thought I'd be a good fit for the staff there and wanted me to look at the hospital. He thought I would really enjoy the work and I went to look at it and I became aware of really the only implementation of aversion therapy that's going on in, in the United States right now. And, and before you went, you, um, you were skeptical about Very. aversion therapy. Very. Um, I think like other, some other therapies in psychiatry, aversion therapy has some misinformation that goes around about it that's not entirely undeserved. Uh, aversion uh, therapy is really a principle of behavioral treatment that can, like anything else, be misused. Uh, Schick Shadle, however, has been implementing this version of aversion therapy for um, close to 85 years. And there are few other alcohol or drug treatment centers in the country that can, um, that can uh, say that they've been around anywhere near For that, that long. long. And the other thing that's very interesting to me about uh, the treatment center where you're talking about Schick Shadle, this treatment is 10 days. It's a 10 day treatment, which just seems unbelievable. But as if you, if you read testimonies from different people who have gone through it, one of them says, you know, we have careers, we have families, we, we can't go away for a few months. We, we, we've, we've got to attack this thing. And um, Whereas 80 years ago, they weren't having the opioid crisis that we have now, but there, there's always been alcoholism and, and, and other addictions that people have had, you know, to get rid of those demons. Yes. And aversion therapy, um, and basically we're, we're talking like Ipecac. We are talking about using a natural pathway that all mammals have evolved over eons to deal with toxins in their environment. And um, animals, cave people, if they ate a toxic plant or a toxic animal, two things would happen. They would either die or they would become very sick. And if they lived, if they survived it, they had a really, really crisp recognition of what it yes. was that made them sick so they wouldn't go near <laughs> so it again. So they would avoid that. Exactly. And what I tell people when they come into the hospital is they need to think of it like this. How many times have you had food poisoning from a restaurant? Okay, I've had my share. How many people ever go back to that restaurant they've had food poisoning from? Yeah. Almost nobody raises their hand. <laughs> right. And the reason for that. I'm saying I want the same thing I ordered exactly. before. <laughs> the reason for that is when the brain is in a state of nausea or, or dire sickness, it will reach out to look at anything that it ingested that, that um, it can attribute that illness to. It's a mechanism that we've evolved over eons to keep us safe that still functions today. All we're doing is co-opting that and putting alcohol in the place of a toxin so that the body recognizes alcohol as a toxin. Now we also do this for opioids of different forms and certain other medications. We can't do it for every medication because we have to be able to duplicate uh, not only the, the mode in which the, the drug or the, the liquid is used, but we also have to replicate as best we can the taste and in some instances the function of it but we block the effects of it. We block the effect of an opioid when we give somebody that to be used in the aversion training process. Um, so it's done very safely. Our processes have been refined over 85 years. The staff at Schick Shadle is unlike any staff I've ever come upon before. They're so dedicated to their work. They're people that have been there for decades. There are books that have been written about Schick Shadle and I've never encountered anything like it. And, and also it's important to realize that to be flatly honest, um, I always had trouble working with, um, with people that were dealing with substance abuse and addiction. I think unless you grow up within that, there's certain elements of it that you simply can't understand from the inside out. Um, also, there's a high burnout rate among providers who uh, treat 
primarily uh, addiction medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think that I was well suited to that. It wasn't until I went to Schick and saw that their numbers that they put out are real, that people do have these kind of recovery rates with this program. Until I saw that, until I met the patients and saw you what their know. response was yeah. to see it's it really is incredibly satisfying work. I read something with you, Richard. I read um, an interview someone else had done. And, and one of the things that came out was that the, the core principle for you all is, this isn't a morality thing. Addiction isn't about morality. Addiction is a sickness we're gonna treat. And in, in speaking with Richard, one of the things that you said was, quote, I believe my role as a psychiatrist is to join my patients on their life journey for a time, relieving their symptoms when possible, reflecting their own truth when evident, and empowering them to make changes that are often the only pathway to complete healing and growth. I think that is lovely. Well, it's, it's true. It, it's uh, something that as you, as you practice psychiatry over the years, you come to um, have your own understanding of, of what actually leads to true healing. And having the patient on board, having them want to get better, having a true collabor collaboration with the provider to get them there, that trust is essential. That's where the real movement in, in psychiatry happens. Psychiatry and, and substance addiction are very squishy fields. They're not anything you can, do, in most cases, do an MRI for. You can't do a blood test for most of it. Much of it relies on the experience and the skill of the, of the provider to, to, mm -hmm. to draw from that and find a treatment plan for everybody that works. Um, and it, it, is, it is true. The, the best outcomes result from developing a real relationship and collaborating uh, with, the, with a patient to find what works for them. And the one further thing I'll say, many of the changes that people need to make that result in long-term health are the more difficult ones. And that includes not medication, but changes in environment, changes in spouse, changes in, in career. Mm -hmm. uh, difficult life changes often stand in the way of people having true recovery. True recovery. Well, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna keep Richard right here on the couch. After the break, could pot hold the key for decreasing opioid use? We'll examine the results of a new study. Stay with us. The nation's chief doctor says he's committed to increasing access to the opioid overdose antidote, naloxone. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams is calling on more people to carry the antidote, which is available over the counter. Adams says 95% of all insured Americans are covered to purchase the drug, which can cost around 80 bucks for one dose. He also wants more federal funds dedicated to increasing naloxone access. Dr. Richard Montgomery is a psychiatry specialist in Boise, Idaho, and has been practicing for 19 years. He graduated from the Medical University of South Carolina College of Medicine in 1999. He specializes in psychiatry, and he specializes in being my only brother. <laughs> So Richard, it's really great to have you here. And as I was explaining at the top of the show, Richard also works in Seattle at a special treatment hospital called Schick Shadel. And he is involved in treating the opioid epidemic, treating um, some addicted patients with aversion therapy. And you know, I think that we've known sort of about aversion therapy with alcohol. What we do uh, when we place an aversion therapy with somebody, we are actually removing the craving. Uh, we are taking someone who is uh, craving opioids or alcohol, mm -hmm. and we immediately are able to re remove the craving. There's and, and you have great MRI images that show when the, the red lit up area when that craving is strong. Yes. And mm -hmm. then it becomes very minimal and turns blue, the mm -hmm. blue pictures show how it is uh, decreased, the yes, craving. Yes, yes, this was a study that was done before I got to Schick Shadel uh, with the University of Washington mm -hmm. showing functional MRI images showing the impact that a 10 day treatment can have on areas of the brain that are implicated in um, addiction studies. And it does make a huge difference in a short period of time in somebody's craving. Now the degree of aversion that somebody leaves with at the end of 10 days uh, is variable. We shoot for someone to have an indifference to whatever the substance is, opioid or alcohol or uh, in some cases methamphetamine that we can treat. 
Um, and sometimes the aversion is so strong that people can't walk down a uh, alcohol aisle in a grocery store because they will literally become nauseous if they wow. see alcohol. Yeah. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool that is, again, only co-opting an already existing natural pathway of aversion that is used to keep us safe from ingesting things that are toxic. It's not punishment on your part. Exactly, and that's yeah. one of the biggest stigmas and misinformations that we fight at Schick is uh, one of the criticisms is, well, this is a cheat. You are, you're uh, just punishing people, and that's not at all the case right. at all. People enter this program willingly. Uh, it is not punishment. It's, it is a very super smart way to treat addiction. I, I wouldn't be doing this job if this treatment uh, did not exist because the existing modalities of alcohol and drug treatment, uh, I know that I would not be a good fit for. <laughs> this is very, very good treatment. Um, I want to talk about another treatment that you have had experience with, Richard, and it's something that a lot of you have heard of. It's um, ECT you know it as shock therapy. This is video from treatment at the Medical College of Georgia. I was right there with a photographer when they were doing this electroconvulsive therapy. It's the oldest biological treatment of mental illness where the brain is stimulated through an electric current. And for some people, it's the only relief from debilitating depression. And Richard, you have found success with something that seemed you know, to the general population seemed really passe, but done in, in the way that people use it now, and there are, are uh, psychiatrists and groups here in Augusta that do ECT, mm -hmm. and you've seen very good results with it. We're in the middle of a renaissance, uh, and, and in some ways, in psychiatry with the treatments available for depression. One of these, in addition to things like RTMS um, and ketamine infusion that are out recently, is electroconvulsive therapy, which has been around since the 1930s. Now, you mentioned a second ago that uh, this is one of the oldest treatments in psychiatry, and I don't think most people realize how old this treatment is. In uh, uh, Greek texts, in, in any written uh, record of, of med medicinal treatments that have been used throughout antiquity, there's great value placed on plants and substances that induce shaking, shaking, which is a seizure. Back in antiquity, there was great value on plants that induced mm -hmm. seizures. And the reason why is they would find that m many people with mental health maladies in the day would improve dramatically after they had an episode of shaking. Yeah, it's like a reset button. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This was recognized in the 1930s in Italy it was first, electricity was first used to induce a seizure um, uh, on a patient who was severely schizophrenic um, and basically completely non-functional. It was that discovery with the treatment of that patient that led to the use of ECT throughout much of the 20th century. And also that implementation of it is not like it is today. It was used back then uh, without anesthesia and there was great variability in the way that it was used. Mm. Today, this procedure is done under anesthesia. Right. People have to fail several but different antidepressant medications before Super, they yep. can. Yeah. Um, but it's extraordinarily safe. It's the safest treatment. It's twice as effective as antidepressants. It is expensive mm -hmm. and it does have its own unique set of side effects which can include memory loss, um, uh, headache, muscle and jaw pain, um, but these are often a price someone who's severely depressed and non-functional is willing to pay. Okay. It's a miraculous therapy. I, I wish that we had more time and we could talk ab about so many different issues, but you, you see this, you, you see these kind of ads all the time about substance abuse, addicted to opiates right here in you know Augusta Chronicle. And so I hope that you'll consider sharing this segment. Dr. Richard Montgomery, thank you very much for giving us your time today. It's been a unique pleasure. It's and been wonderful. Yes, it's been very <laughs> unique for us to work together in this capacity, mm -hmm. hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be back after the break, but in the meantime, you will find all the contact information for Richard and for Schick Shadle on our website, wjbf.com. Just click the Jenny link. We'll be right back. What we found was significant reductions in craving related brain activity after they completed the treatment. The statistical significance on this was off the scale. 69% of the people were still sober one year after participating in this study. It absolutely saved my life. I don't think that I had the willpower to do it without the help of Shikshadal. I've never been happier. I've never felt better in my whole entire life. 
A traveling memorial to those who died of opioid overdoses is in Washington, D.C. right now. The memorial consists of 22,000 pills on a wall, each engraved with the image of someone who fatally overdosed in 2015. It's called the Prescribed to Death Memorial. It also contains a ticker that tallies the number of deadly overdoses from opioids. We are losing 115 people a day to overdoses from opioids. This is the definition of a public health crisis. The National Safety Council says one in four Americans has been directly impacted by the opioid crisis, but 40% still don't consider it to be a threat to their family. There are people who may really, really be at a point where they're willing to try something different. Seattle's far away from Georgia, but we do have the number for Schick Shadle, and there are people who may want that number, so I hope that you'll consider passing that information along or sharing this segment of The Jenny Show with them. That is all the time we have today. Thanks again to my brother, Dr. Richard Montgomery, for his interesting insights and important information about opioid addiction and treatment. You'll find lots of information about the treatment hospital, Schick Shadle, on our website, wjbf.com. Just click the Jenny link. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I'll see you again next Tuesday at 1230 for Jenny.